try to repeat each question with this microphone. Okay. Just do that. How do you stop the thing? Get up. Another session, the title of this session is Desktop Operating System of the Future, OS3 plus flat, uh, plus flat tech, presented by Robert McQueen. Hey, hi everyone. Um, I guess most of you here know um, what OS3 is, what Flatpak is. Um, maybe half of you here work on Atomic Workstation. Um, so <laughs> I just wanted to give you uh, some feedback from Endless, where we've taken some of these technologies uh, and deployed them uh, in production sooner, and we've got some learnings from that. Um, I have to say that some of the problems we're solving are kind of easier than the problems you guys have to deal with, um, because we have one system image, we have one init RD, our installer is basically DD, and that's what happens in the factory. So, you know, the, we have some, some very nice things, um, but we have some, some great pain points as well. Um, just one minute sales pitch, what is Endless? Um, the idea of Endless is basically to make technology more accessible to the world. Um, the idea that you need a real computer, you need you know, mouse or keyboard, proper CPU, so that you can learn, so that you can create, so that you can develop, run spreadsheets, whatever it is that you need to do, um, which you can't do on a $100 Android smartphone. Um, so the world is split by kind of wealth distribution here. Um, the wealthiest 1.2 billion have got computers, um, and as you go down, you find that people don't have computers. They don't have access to computers. Uh, and you ask them, uh, do you want a computer? And the answer is yes. Um, so these are people, so um, we're skipping the bottom bit, um, people who uh, are in, in complete poverty and, and computers are not their problem. Um, but in the middle, um, people with, you know, they have maybe patchy internet access, they have TV, they have power most of the time, they have uh, uh, access to smartphones, typically don't have desktop computers. Um, that's what Endless is, is aiming to solve. The other reason, um, so cost is one factor. The other factor that, that uh, stops people from, from wanting or being happy to buy a desktop computer um, is the amount of data that you get through. Um, the kind of figure that we, uh, that we kind of work with is that uh, in, in the Western world, um, you know, kind of uh, developed societies, whatever you want to call it, um, a desktop computer might get through 60 gigabytes of data in a month. And that's streaming YouTube, that's, you know, Windows Update, that's, you know, Docker Pool, like, that's whatever it is that you're doing. Um, whereas an average um, like emerging markets data plan in one month is, is 500 megabytes. So that's two YouTube videos, or that's one month of talking to your family on WhatsApp. So, you know, <laughs> um, so there's a big problem with connectivity. Um, so that, that kind of, those two things, cost and connectivity, um, push the requirements for Endless OS. Um, so the idea is that Endless OS works on low-cost computers, uh, and the idea is that Endless OS will work for you if you have very poor or very expensive or no internet. Um, so, yeah, robustness, easy to use. This is people's first computer, um, and dealing with the internet and dealing with, with bad computers. Um, We've uh, gone on a kind of evolution of, of trying different ways to actually reach these, these users. There's a whole kind of channel problem, right? People without computers don't go to computer stores. People who go into computer stores uh, are looking for their idea of what a computer is. So actually finding um, our users is a challenge for us. Um, we, uh, we started out actually with the idea of this kind of, you know, the Moto X where you like, plug in a keyboard and a monitor into your phone. Um, but we actually set that one aside because we realized that a cheap computer and a cheap phone actually costs less than a phone that's powerful enough to also run a desktop. So it's like Samsung Galaxy Note thing that's like $700, or like a $100 computer and a $100 phone. Um, so we made our own hardware. This is, um, <laughs> this is the ARM PC that's, uh, that costs $79. Um, they don't show up on FlatHub because a lot of these have actually been sold into the places that don't have connectivity at all. So we've actually downloaded all of this good flat packs and we actually put them onto these devices which go off into, you know, into the hills and uh, give people access to Wikipedia and stuff. Um, you can download the OS, you can buy PCs with Endless uh, pre-installed. Um, yeah, um, we sell the most of the, the lowest spec PCs. 
Um, so the technology that, that powers NSOS, um, it's based on Debian, um, just kind of by, by historical accident or, or decision. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, we use GNOME, we have the entire desktop stack, it's amazing. We customize the shell and a few other places to, to deliver the ease of use that we're looking for. Um, we have a, a, an SDK for building what we call uh, knowledge applications. So these um, offline content apps which integrate into the desktop, they're searchable, um, they're built on top of a uh, data distribution framework that's built into the OS. Um, so we're actually leaning really heavily on OS tree and Flatpak to bring in the operating system, the apps, uh, and now the content that goes in the apps as well. So there's copies of Wikipedia, this is you know, math curriculum, this is you know, uh, healthcare, maternity, how to look after your baby, all of this stuff. Um, I think maybe kind of outside of known continuous, uh, Endless is, is the first kind of Linux OS to actually take OS3 out into production and, and put it in users' hands. Um, so the idea is to kind of share some of the experiences that we have from that. Um, probably don't need to explain what OS3 is. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the strengths of OS3, um, and we've got you know four going on five years of experience of this as bulletproof updates, right? So we've gone through um, machines that we flashed and they went into a warehouse, and then we sell them, and then you can upgrade them from the three years three years ago version to the current version. That's just amazing. Um, we're a startup. We're a small company. We have a very small QA team. Um, we actually produce only two builds of the OS. Um, okay, slight lie. Um, but essentially two. We have the one for PCs and we have the one for our um, ARM computer. Um, so that means our QA is focused on basically one version of the OS. Uh, and we only maintain that one version and we update it. Um, the deltas are hugely valuable to us. Um, you know, we, we do all of this stuff, building the OS, changing stuff all the time. Um, OS tree uh, deltas take million years to generate um, and then they spit out this like 10 megabytes and then you can upgrade uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so that is some amazing rocket science and it's very, very cool. Um, it uses an algorithm called BSDIF, you know, read through the paper. It, it kind of does spot the differences between different versions of binaries and looks for offsets that might be the same algorithm but it has different uh, offsets and things. It's very cool. Um, the deduplication on disk is incredibly important to us. Um, the most common uh, configuration for Endless is a 32 gig gigabyte MMC um, as your only uh, persistent storage. Um, so the idea of having um, you know, a whole different copy of the OS uh, every time you upgrade um, and then still having your videos and your apps and whatever is just not possible for us. Um, so we really need the deduplication that OS tree gives us on disk. Um, and something that's really cool for basically when you're in the field, it's broken, I need to tweak it, um, OS tree admin unlock lets us actually play around with things. It's a very, very cool feature. Um, things that kind of, uh, uh, kind of hurt us with OS tree. Um, I said one of the benefits is we have only one, um, one OS tree per platform. Um, when we actually got into partnerships with, uh, with OEMs, um, then we ran into the problems that they were adding hardware and chipsets and stuff um, faster than we were comfortable upgrading the OS. Um, so we came up with this idea of basically a little bit of, a little bit of the future. Um, so this uh, next hardware branch, um, it's, uh, it's basically the stable release of the OS, um, where we pull in the kernel and the X server, whatever else we need from our master branch, and we build that as a, a kind of tracking branch. So we rebuild a next hardware version with newer drivers. Um, and the cool thing about that is because we've pulled the kernel from master, then we know that next time we make a, a major release of the OS, then we're not going to see any weird regressions. Right? They're not really on a branch, they're just at an intermediate state. Um, and only the people who have those fancy new computers need that branch. And when they upgrade, they'll rejoin the mainline. Um, so that really works really well for us. Printer drivers, like <laughs> you put NSOS on a DVD, um, the OS3 compresses down to about two gigabytes. A quarter of that is printer drivers. <coughs> because when you take a computer out into the forest, what happens, right? Someone has an old printer and they plug it in. So we need all the printer drivers. Um, and this Fumatic DB thing is like an exit of 500. So it doesn't deltify because it's like heavily compressed. Um, and then enter the vendors. So like HP has two different demons and blah. And this is kind of miserable, right? So it, the, the cups downloader thing can put a printer driver into VAR. Doesn't work on ARM. Um, and that covers a bunch of printers if you have a connection. And then you have these weird ones with demons and things. So if there's one thing that we could do to make our lives easier, it would be figure out, can we put a print, print driver in a flat pack, or can we at least bubble wrap it so that we can just get the thing and just put the bytes in and out? Um, 
the OS uh, development experience is a little bit awkward for us. Um, so we, we, we build the OS tree by just unpacking all the devs, basically dev bootstrap, and then we check it into OS tree with a few tweaks. Um, we kind of have a way to put the genie back in the bottle um, and basically put the depackaged database back and break all the hard links and make it writable again. So for the uh, lucky 10 people, we have these weird kind of mongrel, like endless Debian systems where if you're doing OS level development, that's kind of what we work with. Um, and it breaks because we kind of suck at Debian packaging like everyone else. Um, the other thing that kind of you know, is gradually kind of piling up um, is we, we can't do package sort of post install scripts. We can't tweak things from one release to the next. So everything that we do that migrates any persistent state on the system, you know, stuff in VAR, stuff in ETC, um, has to be a systemd unit that runs <coughs> boot up in certain cases. And so those have to be as atomic as we can make them, which sometimes isn't. Um, and they have to be kind of idempotent because they may get run more than once or they get run on a future upgrade. So this is kind of gnarly. And we have this kind of like trash pile, growing trash pile of boot time fix ups. Um, yeah, so um, how could OS3 get better for us? Um, we're actually working on a couple of things, sharing updates across uh, the local network, um, sharing updates on USB sticks. Um, we've been working on some automated rollback. Um, so at the moment, we detect certain failures um, by um, GDM doesn't start. And then in that case, you get the grub menu back again. You can boot the old one, and you can, you can roll back your system. Um, that definition of broken is, is, is a bit broken. Right? GDM can start and be completely happy, and the user can still see nothing on screen. So defining broken is a little tricky. Um, Putting stuff out of the OS tree is another kind of thing that, that we need to do. Um, so we have LibreOffice in our OS tree, right? So we kind of have to upgrade the OS if we want to deliver a new LibreOffice stuff. Um, so we've actually added support in our app data for kind of pulling and installing flat packs as a, a kind of a step before we upgrade the new uh, OS tree. So what we're going to be doing now is just move everything into flat packs so that we can make the OS tree as small as possible. Um, see also printer drivers. Um, security wise, um, we, we do, obviously, the, the GPG signing and the verification and checksumming um, whilst we're pulling and deploying the OS tree. Um, but it would be great if we could extend that to runtime and, and kind of improve the robustness properties of the OS. Um, IMA maybe couldn't do this, but there's also FS Verity that might be coming and might help us there. So that's cool. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> do we need depackage OS tree? Um, I hope not. Uh, we're actually taking all of the excitement out of the OS, and it should be simpler and smaller over time. And I, I kind of hope that we don't need to do the kind of composition rocket science stuff that, that's uh, necessary um, for, for some of the, the more complex use cases. Um, so uh, NSOS uh, applications. This is kind of weird. I don't know if I turn my screw. Yeah. Yeah, but then this will like switch to high DPI and Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, this must go into something that goes into the cloud and then like fails. <laughs> um yeah, so I don't think it's this. I think it's like yeah, the it's connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, uh. <laughs> mm. It's not good. I'll just keep hand waving. That's more important because I'm going to run out of time otherwise. <laughs> See, the time keeps going. <laughs> Um, so um, Endless has um, over 100 applications that, um, that we created using our content ingestion and distribution system. Um, and we ship about 100 uh, third-party open source Linux desktop apps. Um, the, uh, prior to 2016, when we switched to Flatpak, we had this uh, weird bundling system we'd made ourselves. And it put everything in zip files, and we had a custom UI for it. Um, and the dependencies between the app bundles and the OS were completely implicit. So it's just all of the shared libraries in the OS are available to all the applications. And like, good, good luck with that. Um, and it broke all the time. You know, we, we didn't have any way to serialize app updates and OS updates. So like the surname would change, or it, it didn't change because we couldn't touch it. And yeah, bad. Um, 
enter Fatpak. Um, it was basically like, extremely exciting, extremely promising for us. So we, we kind of went all in, you know, put everything on black, um, and we just switched to GNOME software, we switched to Fatpak. Um, and actually, we reused our kind of bundle building system. Um, to, you know, we had these devs where the prefix was changed to slash endless. So we just used that and changed the prefix to slash app. And then we just stuck all of those into uh, flat packs. Um, and we actually took uh, the OS itself and made that you know, plus or minus into a flat pack runtime. Or you know, we ran Debootstrap again, but with a different subset of packages um, to kind of provide the ABI. Um, and oh yeah, we also pulled a neat trick, which is we, we switched from 32 to 64 bit and from Ubuntu to Debian and from GNOME 3.8 to GNOME 3.22 um, with an over-the-air update, so that was pretty cool. We had to add a script because it deletes all the old app stuff, but you can do that on like an, any end of system and get to the latest stuff, so yeah. <laughs> Try that with a package manager. <laughs> um, for us, Flatpak was just a complete game changer. Um, we had all these like intricate release dances of the, is the SDK team doing this or not, blah, 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 and it actually changed our organization like structure. The SDK team went off and started doing their thing and they were cut from the release schedule. So now we've changed the OS development cycle as well. Um, we actually started out uh, benefiting hugely by sharing the Flat, um, OS tree repo between um, OS tree on the OS and Flatpak. Um, we found some exciting concurrency and locking issues because of that, um, which I think we fixed. Um, but actually, the benefit of that sharing is, is, is kind of disappearing over time because we're moving to the, the free desktop runtimes, the known runtimes, and the kind of upstream stuff. Um, yeah, Flatpak. Uh, we, we're moving our third party apps up to Flathub. So we've gone from having 100 apps that are kind of not maintained to having 180 that are maintained and they work better and they're more up to date and we're kind of just removing maintenance drag and burden from our operation. Um, so that's really cool. Um, some of the challenges we see uh, with Flatpak uh, are um, it really, really has almost no handling of out of disk situations. So while you're doing a pull from a user and committing it to the system, it, it, you have everything twice, which might be all of your disk space. Um, if you run out of disk space in that operation, it just leaves all the copies behind, so your disk is then full forever. Uh, from the user perspective, it's just gone. Um, so that's kind of awkward. We tried to fix that, but accidentally like, deleted the whole repo. And, yeah, so. <laughs> um, the other thing is that this is all very, very safe. So you know, in order to be atomic, then there's like um, F-Syncs and you know, the stuff that basically, uh, in, in GNOME software, there's this assumption that most of the time will be downloading, and then stuff will be installed at the end, and that'll be the quick bit. But we see the download, like that we get to 90%, and then uh, if you've got like an SD card or an MMC or you know, 5,000 RPM hard drive, the thing that takes the entire time is doing all of the OS tree operations. Uh, but I was talking to Colin about that earlier, so maybe we can improve. Um, there are still too many um, entry and exit points from the sandbox, um, so we actually ran into a problem with, with portals um, where something that used to be permissible, file URIs, became not permissible. And we have apps that do that, and they don't work. So now we have a patch to our portal to say, actually, these apps are fine. So great, you know, perpetual maintenance burden. Um, because there isn't really any way to be forwards or backwards compatible. So when you poke a hole in the sandbox, then that's kind of a, you know, you have a hole in the boat for life. Um, so less of those. <laughs> um, OK, any questions? Can someone ask the question, what did the last slide say? Improvements for Flatpak. <laughs> um, so we, we're doing LAN and USB sharing of apps. Um, switching to build stream should help us because we, we actually see this kind of bloat of runtimes. Because every time you rebuild the Yocto thing, you get new binaries, you get new known oh. binaries. Oh, yeah. There's the last slide. Um, command line apps, um, there's a lot of little things that people are like, oh, I'd switch this if I had blah. Um, so that's kind of coming. We need to improve that so you can actually put them in your path and use the normal name. Um, removal media, and then apps. Flat back all the things. <laughs> Any other questions? Will you ever publish uh, links to your Flatback uh, repositories? I'm not sure if they are published. They're, they're hidden in plain sight. <laughs> so if you download the image, you can see where they are. Yeah, um, no, I, I have them, but... <laughs> so we actually have patches in GNOME software that add uh, dbus services when you install our runtimes so that 
desktop search works and this kind of stuff. So, I mean, you're going to gradually get a worse and worse experience unless you're running on endless OS because we're building stuff in the OS to solve the data distribution problems. So they might work accidentally, but they probably won't keep working. Uh, it, it works, but uh, I think that the application itself will work. Maybe these additional services will... Yeah, well, eventually you, you'll have, uh, you know, news app with no news in it or something. So, ah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I have the, the shameful converted system. So uh, I've, uh, I've actually got, um, to be honest, uh, VirtualBox is the only thing that I've added. Um, I've moved the rest of my stuff into, into flat packs now. So I have a Tomboy flat pack because I'm the only guy in the world who uses Tomboy, so I've flat packed it. Um, so yeah, uh, almost everything I need is an endless. The, the, the real sort of killer for me is, is virtualization. If anyone wants to help me make a boxes flat pack, you know, um, I started, I don't know Valor, but yeah. Come help me. So, any last question? Cool. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> so, once again, please, if you can or wish, leave your feedback on stage.org. And at 5 15, there will be a surprise at the courtyard. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.